Welcome back to the channel everyone, we're going to be doing another comparison today, and this time between the newly released iPad Pro 11 slash 12.9 inch models. Now these aren't, these are new, but they came out like a couple months ago. I should have reviewed them at that time, but I was too busy making those iPhone SE2 videos. <laughs> And we're going to compare it to another iPad that Apple is still selling in the Apple Store, which is the iPad Mini 5. And honestly, both iPads are really great. I think they both have their place. And obviously, if you have all the money in the world, the iPad Pro, the 11 or 12.9 inch models are both better than the iPad Mini 5 every single which way you look at it. So if you have all the money in the world, picking up those newer iPads, the iPad Pros, will almost always do you better than the original or smaller iPad Mini 5. And it just basically comes down to the you know features that you're getting and all those different things like that. So price tag wise, the iPad Pros obviously cost a bit more. The iPad Mini 5 costs way less. So if you need a cheaper alternative, the iPad Mini 5 is definitely a way to go. And I will leave both of these linked down below for the cheapest prices that I find on Amazon. So you can get them from there and help support the channel at the same time. Now looking on the front, I'll go ahead and start off with the iPad Mini 5. This panel is a 7.9 inch screen. It's an IPS panel and I think it honestly it really isn't even that bad. You do have True Tone on this iPad, which is really cool. So it does get a little bit warm, and I really do like that about these specific iPads. And the screen and the body, you know, is pretty familiar of what we had before. Every single iPad Mini that has ever came out has a look like this. And even stemming from the iPad Mini 3 that brought Touch ID, every single iPad Mini has really looked like this. The original ones had those different home buttons, but you know, since the iPad Mini 3 brought Touch ID, moral of the story is, is that this iPad Mini, in terms of the design, might look a little aged, and that might be its biggest disadvantage, especially when you compare it to something like the iPad Pro. You look at that and you're like, wow, that thing looks so futuristic, and you look back at the iPad Mini, and you're like, wow, this thing kind of looks outdated, archaic in a way, even though, I'll be completely honest, it's really not, and almost all the features that you have on the iPad Pro you pretty much have on the iPad Mini 5. You know, there's a couple things that are really you not know, missing, but the gestures, split screen, multitasking, all that stuff is pretty much still there on the iPad Mini 5, which is really impressive. So looks can be deceiving just because it looks a little older. It doesn't mean it's, you know, unnecessary or not needed or something like that either. So that pretty much covers the outside of the iPad Mini 5. Obviously, you have the home button, the little bit of bezel on the sides, and that's quite a bit of bezel on the top and bottom but that really pretty much covers the front of the iPad Mini 5. Whereas on the iPad Pro, we have a ginormous 11 inch or 12.9 inch model, whichever one you pick up. Now in the 11 inch, which is the specs I'm looking at now, you have a 1668 by 2388 panel, which is a really good panel. I've owned the third gen and the fourth gen, both the 11 and 12.9 inch models. And honestly, they are very, very good panels. I can't really tell too much of a difference between the 11 inch and 12.9 inch in terms of the screen resolution or anything. I don't really even know if there's that big of a difference but the screens look great you do have face id on it which is really cool and these ipads look really really nice if you're using an ipad all the time and you want something that kind of looks good at the same time this is definitely the way to go these ipads look extremely good and it's hard for me to envision where apple could go beyond this in terms of the screen without them removing all the bezel on it because honestly even if they shrunk down the bezels to half the size i don't really even think many people would notice i don't even think many people would want it to be honest so definitely the screen Screen and the way this body looks and everything is extremely good and the screen is really good too so in terms of the front for sure 100% the iPad Pro will definitely overtake the iPad mini any which way you look at it on the bottom we have a lightning port on the iPad mini 5 and a USB type C port on the iPad Pro which is really cool and on the back we have the single camera setup on the iPad mini 5 and a kind of a dual camera set up with an additional lidar sensor so kind of like a triple camera setup on the ipad pro which is really cool now between both you know is there one camera that's better well yeah probably the ipad pros is better but we'll talk about that once we get there but really in terms of the outside those are pretty much the main differences now another thing obviously the ipad pros are bigger but another thing the sides of the iPad Pro are flat, something more like the iPhone 5, where the iPad mini has that rounded design that we pretty much all know, like if you, even if you, even if you own an iPhone 11 or whatever, the sides of it are pretty familiar to what you're going to feel on an iPad mini. Now, when you're feeling both in the hand, the iPad Pro is definitely the more premium one. And like I stated before, man, if you have all the money in the world, picking up an iPad Pro will probably do you better than picking up an iPad mini 5. But in terms of the outside, that pretty much covers it up. Now, hitting on the software, this is where, as I always say, this is where things get a little bit strange. I'm not really too sure how long both of these are going to last. Now, theoretically, and here's the thing. Apple does their 
software updates based on the chipsets inside of these iPads or iPhones or whatever. So just because an iPad came out a year after or whatever doesn't necessarily mean that it will not or won't get the same updates as an iPhone that came out a year earlier or a year after or whatever. They basically base these updates based on the chipsets inside. Now the iPad mini 5 came out in 2019, early 2019, where the iPad Pro really just came out. And the chipsets inside of them, the iPad mini 5 has an A12 Bionic chip, where the iPad Pro has an A12Z Bionic Bionic chip. So a little bit of a difference right there, but they're still at their core A12 chips. Now, back in the day, the iPad Air 2, I think, had the A8X chip, and that was able to get an extra version of software. But the iPad Pro 3rd Gen had the A12X chip. So so are the iPad Pro 3rd Gen and the 4th Gen both getting the same updates? Like, I don't really understand what they're going to do. But regardless, the iPad Mini 5 started off with iOS 12.1.3. It is on iPad OS 13.5 right now, which is really cool. And the same thing goes with the iPad Pro 4th Gen, except it didn't start off with iPad OS or anything. It started off with iPad OS 13.4. Now it's on iPad OS 13.5. And when it comes down to it, when I'm looking at both and everything, I mean, software is great on both of these. I love the software experience. iPad OS is so great. You can split screen mods test you could have done that way before but it's a really good software and i really do like it so in terms of the software itself it's really great on both they're exactly the same but in terms of software support i will probably say that the ipad pro 4 gen will probably at least get an extra year software support on top of the ipad mini 5 i could be totally wrong there but basing on what apple has done in the past that's kind of where I, you know kind of leads me at. i don't know so in terms of software that pretty much covers it up there now hitting on the performance side of things the iPad mini 5, like I stated, has the Apple A12 Bionic chip, hex core CPU, and there were two different models, and both those models have 3 gigs of RAM, with the iPad Pro 4th Gen has the Apple A12Z Bionic chip, an octa-core CPU, and there's four different models, and all those models have 6 gigs of RAM. Now, when I tell you about the performance, you have to keep this in mind, that the iPad Pro costs substantially more than the iPad mini 5, okay? So, the iPad mini 5 is an okay iPad when it comes to performance. I think it's good enough and I think actually it's probably above average for a majority of people. It's smooth whenever I did anything. There were some glitchiness going on here and there but there's really not too much to complain about. You know what I mean? The only thing that kind of might bug me a little bit which might be an advantage to some people would be the size. I personally prefer kind of a bigger iPad. I use a you know a bigger MacBook. I'm still trying to transition to a bigger iPhone but I kind of like the bigger phones and bigger setups especially bigger iPads. So that's one thing that kind of threw me off, but that has nothing to do with the performance. So performance in and of itself on the iPad mini 5 is actually pretty decent if you ask me. Whereas on the iPad Pro, obviously it's the best performing iPad, probably the best performing tablet right now. It's extremely fast. Anything I did with it was like butter. You also have that 120 hertz refresh rate on the iPad Pro which is extremely cool. That has nothing to do with the performance, but it's still a really cool thing to have. And whenever you're you know, changing with the screen or doing anything, it really adds a little bit more fluidity, which is really cool. Now, performance-wise, really gr both are great if you're a student or whatever. I always have to say that because I know a lot of students watch these videos. If you're a student and you're trying to figure out which iPad to get, if it's a price thing, obviously get the iPad mini 5. If it's a performance thing, then get the iPad Pro. If you're somebody who needs a lot of performance and you're going to be doing a lot of heavy work, getting an iPad Pro will definitely do you much better. So performance wise, the iPad Pro is substantially faster and substantially smoother and it has better RAM management. So you can keep a lot more apps in the background with the iPad mini 5. You know, I think the best way to sum it up is it gets the job done. You know what I mean? If you need to get from point A to point Z, it'll get you there. Probably not the fastest way, but it'll still be good enough for a lot of people. So in terms of performance, that pretty much covers it. Now hitting on the cameras. Now there's really not any competition. Okay, the iPad mini 5 has a single 8 megapixel camera, where the iPad Pro has a 12 megapixel wide angle lens, a 10 megapixel ultra wide sensor, and then the LiDAR sensor, which is really awesome, which that is basically just a depth sensor. You can do 4K at 60 frames on that iPad Pro, where you can only do 1080p on the back camera of the iPad mini 5. Now honestly, I don't know who's going to be using this camera too often, but one person I see the iPad Pro, you know, that demographic for are pretty much the developers, the people who want to go and utilize that LiDAR sensor right now in order to make their apps better or to even make apps based off AR technology. And I think that's a huge compelling thing to pick up an iPad Pro is probably for the developers. So you can get that kind of technology beforehand before the new iPhones, the iPhone 12s, before they get those features. So 7 megapixel sensors on the front, you can do 1080p at 60 on the iPad Pro. But other than that, that pretty much sums up the camera sensors. Now ending it off with the battery life, we have a 5,124 mAh battery on the iPad mini 5 and 
I think we had around an 8,000 mAh battery on the iPad Pro for some reason it's not showing my battery life, but regardless, I will actually tell you, if you have that 120Hz enabled on the iPad Pro, I might just say that the iPad Mini 5 has the better battery life, I guess for that sense, but for every other sense, I would probably say that the iPad Pro has a better battery life, and on top of that, the better battery features, you have reverse charging on the iPad Pro, which is really cool, so you can plug in something into the USB Type-C port, like a USB Type-C to Lightning, and charge an iPhone, which is really cool. So you don't necessarily have that on the iPad mini, but to kind of sum up the video and to answer the question, which iPad should you pick up in 2020? Well, if it's between both, like I stated before, if you have all the money in the world, pick up an iPad Pro. That is a seriously good iPad. But I think the iPad mini 5 still has a lot going for it too. You know, I don't think it's, you know, a horrible iPad by any means. I think it's a pretty decent one. And honestly, I would honestly probably say again, picking up an iPad Pro third gen would be a really good substitute and a really good middle point between both of these. Even though it's older than both of these, it's still an extremely good tablet and I think it has so much going for it still. So I think that pretty much covers it. Like I stated, if you want to pick any of these up, links will be down below. But that's really pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section as well. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count, so it means so much if you guys can hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel, all those links are linked down below. I'd really appreciate if you guys to check it out. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, till then.